Hello, ladies. Gents. <laughs> All of the above. Yes, I made it to bed. Those of you that were up late with me, I did survive. And we'll chit chat about that. For a few minutes. Get all my junk out of the way. Hey, Debbie. Cutting up. This is an old um, sheet, I think. I have a lot of scraps of everything. So I'm just going to cut a strip of this. So I'm just going to show different things that I use for the binding once we get started. But let me just cut this first. Well, maybe it's just a bit kind of thick like that. Maybe. Why should I cut it? <laughs> Why should I cut it? I'll just cut the length of this before we get actually started. And I apologize up front. I get in the zone and start doing things and I forget to look up. So I'm just apologizing up front. <laughs> if, if I miss somebody or I don't acknowledge. And so if you have a question, if you could put it in caps and I'll like, when I go back and look over there, then I can look up. I'm just really bad at, you know, going back and forth. Those of you that are around me, you know that. Because I need glasses to look here and I don't need glasses to look over there. So when I look up, it's all blurry because I have my reading glasses on. And then I have to take them off to see my computer. What a mess. Bifocals? I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, we're not going to start yet. We're going to let a few people show up. I'll give a background of what we're going to do at the beginning. Um, Debbie had asked if um, I could show how I make a, um, a large spine smaller. She has a um, Reader's Digest book. And as we all know, that those of us that have had our little experience with all these books, these Reader's Digest books, the spine when it's opened up it's um about an inch and three quarters the average one and because she wants it to be a notebook that she's going to carry with her and she's going to put pages in there that can be removable she wants it no bigger than an inch so what we're going to do is look at various ways that you know we can reduce the size of the spine and um, see which way works best for you guys. Because there's, that I can think of, there's about maybe three different ways. Um, one not so obvious, uh, you know. <laughs> um, others may be very, very obvious to those of you that have already made journals. But if you're new to it, then it might be um, a way of approaching it. 
Uh, last night, those of you that were, I was on last night, for those of you that were there and stayed with me till, I don't know, what time did we go up off last night? I think it was three o'clock this morning <laughs> that we finally went off. And it was all for a good reason. We were um, um, talking about these, well, first of all, let me backtrack. Um, Patricia, who is on Facebook and on YouTube, um, she was on with us last night. And you know how I ramble with my stories. One thing led to another. And we started talking about Japan and then Africa came up into the discussion. And then she mentioned that she was going. Now I forgot which country. Is it Uganda she's going? Help me out, those of you that were there. I think it's Uganda. And she's going um, to visit this um, orphanage that she went to visit before. And so she was mentioning that. And then we thought, well, wait a minute. If she's going, all of us make little journals. You know, we asked her, do you think that the kids would like to get a little journal um, when she goes for her visit? And so she said, yeah. So that kind of snowballed. And so we were playing around with the size of the journal, what to go in, what not to go in. And that led us up to, I think, like 3 o'clock in the morning. Fun, fun time. Um, so after, um, after we, um, talk about the, um, spine, um, which won't take too long, um, then I'll fill you guys in that were not insomniacs with us last night about this journal thingamajigger and see who wants to get involved. We have a short period of time, um, cause this was just kind of a spur of the moment. So I'll just drop that right there and we'll move on to the spine and get that done. And then we'll pick up on the journals for the orphanage. Sound like a plan? Are you guys with me <laughs> so far? Oh, I need a drink of something. <laughs> oh, no, Vicki was up doing her woodpecker thing. Let's start calling her Woody. Studying wood carving. Oh, isn't that beautiful wood carving? I'll show you later my wood carving. Don't forget to ask. I got too many things to share. Okay, so one of the um, ways is if you were to get your um, book cover and literally just cut the spine out which I did with this one only because it was a mess. I did this a while back. It was very ratty and falling off anyway. And you could completely take off the spine. Um, we'll go through all the options. I'll just give you a rough overview of what we could, might be able to do. And then we'll try all three. And then you can decide which is the one for you. Um, so this is an inch right here. So we could create a new spine, and we do that with various ways. You can do it with tape. You can do it with um, some fabric, and it's kind of just the rough draft, and then you can cover it up and decorate it in the way that you want it um, to look. So that's one way. Take off the spine completely. And like I say, we'll do that after we look at the options that we have. Um, another way to do this is if you're going to cover up the spine anyway, um, you could cut it off again, and then you could take this, double it and fold it, and then glue it back together just as I suggested with this. The only difference is that you wouldn't be taking it all apart. You're just taking one side apart, okay? Okay. Now, the other one is that most of these spines, once you get them taken apart, as you can see, they're pretty flimsy, right? Now, if you took this inch here that you're looking for, and first you would clean this away. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and try. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought of this while I was tearing these apart, and I've never tried. What I'm going to do right now, I've never tried. So we're going to find out together if it works. I'm not shy about making mistakes in front of people. 
and showing things work or don't work. That's the fun part, learning together. Because if you come across like everything works the first time and um, everything you do, you know, looks wonderful, oh, that's just unreal. <laughs> that's just totally fake. <laughs> and then it makes the newbies feel, you know, inadequate, like everything I try, it doesn't work. How come? Well, it's because everybody else is fake, right? Okay, so now let's imagine that looks not too straight. Let me straight. I thought I had one cut straight before. Maybe not. Oh, that looks, well, maybe that's a little straighter. Let me see here. No, well, I guess that was it. All right, so now getting the, um, the same thickness is kind of important so that it doesn't look like, you know, like we did what we just did. <laughs> so two of these, this is the back to, I think it's like mixed media. Oh, it's watercolor paper. But it was just, you know, the cardboard that comes on the front and the back. And these two put together is pretty much the thickness, a tiny bit thicker than this. But for the spine, I think that's pretty cool. We'll do, go ahead and do that. So let me get some tape or glue or something. Let's see what I have. No, nope, not that kind of tape. That won't work. Let's just go ahead and glue it. And we'll use the fast, the fast drying glue, our favorite glue, fabric tack. We like it on everything because this stuff dries pretty quickly and, um, you know, doesn't let us down. Although it is kind of uh, got a mind of its own, but that's okay. It's got a mind of its own. So let's put some of this down. And put the lid on or else it's like Mount Vesuvius. It just whoosh, spills over. All right, so let's double this up and then we'll trim it down so that it halfway looks even. <laughs> it doesn't look too even right now. <laughs> That's okay. That's what scissors were invented for. And it gushes out the sides, which is perfectly fine. Okay. Give that a second to dry a little bit. Right there. So this will be this will be for this project. So let's let that sit over there just for a second and dry a little bit. And let's do this one that has already been taken apart and see how we approach that. So Let me cut this down. To, well, okay. Just imagine this is an inch because I'm going to make this journal for myself and I want it to be the two inch, two inch journal. I mean, two inch spine. So um, the same um, application, you know, would, would be whether it's narrower or, or thicker. So just for those of you that have not altered a spine, you can do, you can have your spine obviously any size you want. So you leave just a little bit of a gap for your folding. And these are just for basic, basic journals. Remember, there's a, like I mentioned before, there's a big difference between, you know, bookmaking, which is a different way of putting these spines in and our basic junk journals. That's a little more advanced. So we're just gonna go ahead and approach it 
like we would a junk journal. So if you have um, any size of book and the spine is not the size that you want it for whatever purpose, then you cut it away. You cut some cardboard, sturdy cardboard, the um, dimension of the spine that you want. And then there's various ways to put this together. Now, the quickest way for me, which I'm all for the quick way, I use different kinds of tapes. I'll just lay some tape on there and uh, make sure it's really secure. You can do it with fabric if you want to cover this up and put some glue and put some fabric. Or you can do both. You can put the tape and then come back and put the fabric over it. It all depends on the kind of look you're going for and the finished product. Now, when I put the tape now, then I can come back and put fabric. I can put paper. I can re I could really pretty much do whatever I want to do. Once you put the fabric, you're kind of stuck with that look, even though you can put papers on the side. Um, you're pretty much stuck with some kind of the textile that's going to be there. So for this, let's just go ahead and put the tape and then we can decide if we go any further, because you know what happened? We went down that rabbit hole the other day and that took us forever. Those journals we made, we were supposed to make a little simple journal and we ended up with an advanced cover. <laughs> and by the way, those of you that were with me for that one, that one is already gone. If you didn't know, I ended up doing a giveaway and we gave away that journal and um, it's already been mailed off. So she should be getting that pretty soon. Okay, let me Okay, so we have a little gap there and you can have that as big or as small as you want. But I've got maybe what? Um, eighth of an inch maybe. And see, I've been jibber jabbering and haven't looked up once. And I bet you guys had questions. Let me cut that a little bit. I don't want it to go past. Let me just put this down and then I'll go look. I told you I was bad at this. Yuck, 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 yuck. This is going to get covered anyway, so it doesn't have to go all the way to the end. Matter of fact, I don't like it going to the end. All right. Okay, so the one that Debbie's doing, she would put an inch right here to make her small journal. All right, let me go see what if there's any questions. No questions. Perfect. I don't feel guilty. And by the way, this is duct tape. I love duct tape. If you're not familiar with it, you can get it at any hardware store, at least here in the States. It's plentiful. straighter and it's very sticky make sure you use either junkie scissors or Tim Holtz scissors because his cleanup good okay 
So again, Debbie, just visualize that being an inch, right? And we're already getting there. And then we would put something pretty here because I don't want to put duct tape here because that'll cover that up. But we would end up putting some kind of paper or fabric or something back here. Okay, so let's leave that for just a second and let's go see how this one is doing. Nice and dry, very good. So I want to I want to measure this about an eighth of an inch in from both ends. So let's figure out where that is and we'll put a mark and we'll cut it and we'll see if my vision for this works. It may not. I will be the first to tell you if it didn't. <laughs> like, oops. <laughs> Made a mess. <laughs> good Debbie. Debbie's good at visualizing. I need I need her help to visualize. Okay, that's a little wonky there. Let me straighten this up a little bit. Okay. Okay, now here's the test. Let's visualize this. Again, we're visualizing. At least you got the red for the contrast. Where the center is for this. And then... Oh, what did I do with my... I lost my, my double, 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 my super duper cake. See, I did too many things last night. Oh, here it is. Is this an inch? Ooh, pretty good. Okay, so let's put some of this on. That worked out pretty cool. Let's see, white on white, kind of hard to see. This is, um, I got this a long time ago at some junk shop, but it's um, like masking tape, but it's uh, double sided and it's got some pretty good stick to it. It's not just regular masking tape, it's just that what's covering it is light masking tape. If you know what I mean. It's very sticky. Oops. Oh, see what I mean? <laughs> very sticky. Got my cords and everything. <laughs> okay. Remember, I've got like about, oh, four, five hours of sleep. <laughs> Oh, I'm a little ditzier than usual. But we'll explain later why. Okay. Now, in addition to that, put a little bit of glue. Because this is your binding when I mean, your spine. So you want it to not fall apart in the middle of you doing something. That would be embarrassing. I still don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to glue it anyway, because we won't know if it's going to work if we don't glue it down. All right. Let me get this close to me just for a second so I can center it. Okay. All right, so the theory is going to be, I'm going to have to put something in here, but I'll do that. We're going to do it together. The theory here is because this is floppy. Ha, ha, ha. Guess what? I think it's going to work. We're taking that almost two-inch spine. And Debbie... Debbie, hello, 
we now have a one inch spine. And you can do that with your reader's die. You have to tear anything apart as far as, you know, the cover and the spine. I'm so excited. This is going to work. Look. And now we just have to figure out a way to make it look pretty. Now the pretty, how to make it pretty. We can do it. Don't worry about it. Yep, voila is right. So, ha, let's see. Well, we could do it a couple of ways. I could get like this tape. Now, remember, we're doing this on the fly. We could get some of this tape because it is pretty heavy duty. And I could lay it like right here so it can kind of flatten it all. That could work. I could also maybe get another piece of this kind of cardboard and make two real thin strips and butt it up as close as possible to this and then leave that little gap right here to create that natural fold. Either one of those ways I think would work. I'm trying to think which is most practical. Because see, this right here is pretty, pretty thin. Because we, we're not using the same thickness as the, the whole outside, just this little paper right there. So the I'm thinking that maybe the this might be the best bet because if we start trying to put those little strips and not get the right thickness, we're going to get this wonky kind of klutzy feel to it. And we might, might ruin the whole, the whole look. So, um, uh Oh, Curly wants the cardboard. Oh my gosh. There's always got to be one in the group that, tests me okay let's try let's try it let's try it and see what happens okay we're gonna do both because i can put this on one side and if it if we don't like the way it looks we can always put the cardboard from the other side right this is a test anyway it's good to test things you can't just assume stuff so now let me find give me a second <clears throat> give me a second to try and find some Some thinner cardboard. Maybe just one of these would work. Let me go see what I have. I'll be right back. I'm listening to you guys. Oh, I forgot. I can't hear you. Oh, wow. Are you listening to me? I got plenty of cardboard, but it's all too thick. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I found a piece. Um, Maybe sort of like that. Let's see, maybe this will work. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this I'm thinking, this is like the thinnest of um, the thinnest of the, you know, harder stuff that I have. And I think that that is, I don't know, I'll cut it and see, but I'm thinking it might be a little too thick, but we'll cut it and butt it up and see what happens. And then you've got, you know, the regular old packaging that is kind of sturdy, really thin, but maybe two of these would be the right thickness. You just don't know. So we'll just try both and see what happens. That's what this is all about. Just trying to figure out 
what works and doesn't work. You never know until we try, right? And, oh, well, see here on the sides here where it's overlapped, it's double. So let's try that thickness. If that works, then we'll just go from there. That cut wasn't really good. Let me see if my cutter will cut these. It should. <clears throat> we'll see. Uh oh, what was that? Okay, one guess from you guys what just fell, but this time it missed my foot. Hey, it cuts it pretty good. Let me see the exact measurement of that we need. See what will I need to cut it over more. So we'll want a gap about that. Pretty cool. Okay, so I need about four of those, maybe two thickness for each side, maybe. I'm thinking. Hold on, Betty. We're getting there. This was the part that was already double. And then if we put the tape there, that might work pretty good. Let's glue these together. It's got a little fur there. Let me cut that off. You want it to lay as flat as possible. Okay. 
And we'll cut that about right there. Okay. So we need to bud this up as closely as possible to the outside and leave the gap kind of hard. Oh, better see it that way. Some color. Okay, so we want to put it up as much as we can toward the red and leave the gap here in the center for the natural fold. So let's put, I know this tape's pretty big for that. Let's see, what else do I have? Let me, let me see what else I got. We'll put a little bit of glue. And see, if I knew ahead of time what I was doing, what you could overnight is lay something heavy on this to flatten that out more. And then when you do this part, you know, a lot of the work's already been done for you as far as keeping that flat. And then just lay it down there, see if you have any trimming to do. Make sure you got enough gap. I think there's enough there. I looked up. Nobody's talking. <laughs> Did you guys take a nap? <laughs> I'm the one that needs a nap. Okay, hold this down a little bit right there. I don't know, ladies, I think it's actually going to work. So, 
So now that we have that secured in place, then I would, because, you know, me and my duct tape, then what I would do is I would come with the duct tape over all of this because that's just kind of holding it there to create that little gap right there. So I'll do that here because I want it to be extra sturdy. Hey, Peggy. Hello, I think it's gonna work. <laughs> hey, it works. Let's put a little bit more tape just right there. All right. You went from a big old bulky spine to a smaller manageable one for the kind of uh, journal you were looking for. Hey, Selena. That's right. Duct tape rules. Quack, quack. Wrong kind of duck. That's okay. We all say it wrong. Okay, so now, just to make it pretty, I'm going to find some pretty paper to put there. Let me see. I have a whole bunch of pretty wallpaper. I've got this one that has some pretty red. Let's see if it's long enough. I can always patch it on there. Oh, wrong color red. Boy, were my eyes deceiving me. Well, we'll just recover the whole darn thing. What do you say? This is more like a burgundy, right? Yeah, that should fit. Or should we put something else in there? Because that really doesn't go. That's a little way too much contrast. Let me see what I got. I've got all kinds of good stuff. Wait a second. I got some paper from Johnny. Out of all that paper, there's got to be a color that goes. Some kind of that, a bluish or something. If I can't find a paper that matches all this, I want my money back. Okay. No blue? Whoa. Oh, that's gray. Oh, gray doesn't look so bad. Wrong kind of blue. Let's 
close. Needs a little bit more black in the blue. Oh, I'm all about the contrast. Okay, now I looked in the mo in the monitor, and this doesn't look close at all, but in real life it does. Oh, this is, looks even more real life together. Woohoo! Oh, that one looks good too. Hey, Barb. No red. So I'm kind of sort of liking this one, actually. Yes, this is a paper pad. Um, I don't have a cover to it, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a cover to it. Johnny might know what it was. I got it from her. All right. So this doesn't make it all the way across, of course. Of course. Oh, there's two. Okay. Shut up, Rosemary. It will work. Yeah, I think that looked cool. Oh, Johnny, this paper pad that had all those textures, I know that it's from Hobby Lobby, right? But I can't remember the name of the, is it their brand or is it uh, another brand when it has all the textures? All right. Well, you know, if I, oh, this might work with just one, and I'll leave a little bit of the red showing on the sides, and that might actually look kind of cool. Yes, sirree. I think we'll do that. That made that simple. I'm all for the simple. Oh, you think that's what it is, Deb? See, I don't really know. So I will take your word for it. And now I know this is upside down, but it gives a crisper tear if you have the metal close to the paper and watch me mess it up okay I think, I think, I think, I think. Okay, to cover this up right here, I'm going to put a little bit of some little fabric right there just to cover it up and make it look kind of cute. <laughs> I guess I could just put some of this, right? Oh, it's not it's not shreddy enough. Let me go get something easily to shreddle. Shreddle. Sure. 
shreddable. Nothing more shreddable than this stuff. And we'll put a little piece down there. Just for the cute factor. We can't forget about the cute factor. <laughs> Caught you awake, huh? <laughs> Just call me sneaky. Yeah, I usually come on when I'm asleep too. <laughs> I do that quite often. Like today. And we'll just put a little bit of this so it just kind of hangs over and looks cute and covers up all that mess. Just right there. So it kind of looks like we were actually really made a book when we didn't, right? Kind of keep in mind where those folds are going to go. This will work. Okay, and then we'll cover up the other little goober on the top. And just try to keep it as much as possible, you know, on that one inch part so that flexibility will still be there. <clears throat> because if you put the glue over a little bit and put this over a little bit, then it starts getting a little chunky and clunky and all that. We don't want to hinder the work we put into making it fold in the right place. All righty. That way you don't see all that little cardboard up there once we put the paper on. Okay. We're getting there. Starting to look kind of cute. 
All right, so we got to cover up this little white stuff here with a little bit of whatever you have, stress paint or paint or whatever it is you've got. Eyeshadow. I've used eyeshadow. It works pretty good. Brown eyeshadow works really good, actually. <laughs> okay, that covers that raw edge. And let's put a little bit. You never know what shows. Even though it's not raw. Let's just make it pretty. We're going through all this trouble. Let's make it pretty. Okay, so Debbie, how many pages were you thinking? Oh, let me retract. You said you wanted the pages to be able to be removed, correct? If I remember. Remind me. I know you told me. You want to remove all of it. And what kind of papers were you thinking? I mean, as far as um, were you just going to put regular copy paper in there to write in, or were you going to um, put mixed media? Were you going to do some kind of artwork? What was your intention for the zero? And then we can kind of figure how many fit in here based on the types of papers you were going to use to write. Okay. Okay, so you can get quite a bit in there. Now, we're going to do it like the signal, sig, signal, <laughs> single, <laughs> I can get it out, signature, or... Because even if they're removable, if you were going to put some kind of elastic, you could have even three of them. Or you could have one big, bent, you know, chunky one. That's up to you. Just trying to see what your vision was. Just the one. Okay. Thank you for coming, Arlene. Okay, so I guess it's time to glue this down. I'm guessing. It's time. So I think the way I'll put this down is we'll put a bunch of this. Whoops. Put a bunch of this all over and then we will smooth that down and see how it ends up looking when we're done. Let me cut away some of this bulkiness. Get my little 
my high tech scraper. <laughs> very high tech, very high tech. Let's see, any questions so far? I haven't been looking again. Yes, no, maybe. Let's see. Hi, Emma. Hmm, don't like too many questions. Matter of fact, I don't see any. Okay. Whoa. That glue comes out fast. That glue wants a home. Okay, and now I got to remember how much of a gap there was on each side to make it even. Okay. I hope this comes out straight. I have a feeling I'm going crooked. <laughs> Don't look. Don't look. Hope I put enough glue there. If I didn't, I would have to squirt some in there. Because right here was the crucial spot and I wasn't paying attention. I was thinking more over here and this was really the crucial point of putting some glue and I may have messed up right there. Okay, so we need to let that dry a little bit. But we're getting there. Yes, this is a Reader's Digest, and there was a request from Debbie if there was some way that we could make the spine to the Reader's Digest smaller. We actually cut it down half. Started off almost two, and we broke it down to one inch. This was a test. And I think it's going to work. I'm 
you might as well just see where the glue isn't so I can stick some in there. Ta-da! Now it's a baby! Now it's a baby's Reader's Digest. How cute! Okay, so I already know the mistake I made when the gluing came. I was concentrating here, and my biggest concentration should have been between that new gap that we created. So don't forget that. You know, really concentrate right here when you're putting your glue down for your cover. I think I got it pretty much, but there's a little tiny, you price that little gap right there where there could have been a little bit more, more glue. I might be able to, mm, I don't know. Maybe with a toothpick, I can get some glue down there. But it's good for now. You get the idea. You get the idea. All right. So now, when it, let's pretend it's all dry and it looks pretty and I didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> Go with me. <laughs> Go with me. Okay, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. All right, so now you have a couple of ways that you can put your signal. Why do I keep saying signal? Single signature. I think I'm trying to say the both of the words at the same time. All right, we can put a um, like an eyelet here and here and run your elastic through it and put your pages in there. But if you don't have that capability, you don't have the tool or you don't have the eyelets, do you or do you not, Debbie? If not, then you can just, let me go get some. You can just get some um, like elastic type stuff like they use on the uh, traveler's notebook. And put that in. Let me go and get some. Okay, so the super, super easy way is just, you know, getting your papers and then just tying it like that and, you know, you're done. <laughs> that would be easy. Do it that way because you didn't want them sewed in. So you can do that. Like I said, you could put the holes in there and run it that way. You could, um, if you didn't want that little thin, thin piece, Um, if you didn't want the thin piece and you had a coordinating color, I think it looks pretty too when you use a soft fabric that's not going to tear into your papers. I think it looks pretty to hold them in like that.
you could tie them in with something soft like that. And that just gives you a completely different look. It just depends on the look you're going for. This looks a little frou-frou-y or whimsical, you know. And then if you just want it to be practical, then you could just tie them. So... Which way is more appealing to you, Debbie? Because either way, they're real easy to get out. Yeah, the eyelet would look really cool there. Yeah, I think so. Do I have, let me see if I have... I have a little bit of everything, but sometimes I don't have the exact thing I need. Now, this is, I made this pretty thick. Now, remember now, we've got two things of cardboard in there and that. Let me see. Let me try this first and see if it ruins <laughs> Before anyone, don't try this at home. All right. This thing has almost broken my toe about four times. Okay, let me see what size I have. Okay, they need to be long to get through that and fold up. And I don't think these I don't think these are long enough to go up and in and over and out. <laughs> if you know what I mean. We can try it. See which ones are taller. Maybe even the smaller ones are taller. I don't know. Oh, they almost look the same in height. Yeah, because these are bigger, but they're not any taller. And it's that depth that we're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yep. Well, I'm adventurous. I don't mind sticking a hole in there and see if it works. <laughs> if you guys are game, I'm game. And they're the same height, so might as well go with the you don't want to put a gaping hole just for that, you know. We need to go demure. Demure. Let's see what colors I have here. What does it back end up being? Is that like a Oh, I got a green, but it's really, really short. Can't use it. Nope. All the longer ones are just plain. Go for it. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. <laughs> what do we got to lose? Okay, let's make a hole. Oops. I think that one's big enough, right? Where did it go? I wonder if it's a small one or I need to do the big one. Okay, let's do a test on something so I don't ruin that. 
I've learned that the hard way. Do a test hole first if you're not sure. Okay, so because it's going to be hard, it isn't like just soft paper that you can force it in. Ugh. I don't think that's going to want to go in there. And I'm afraid this one might be too big. Let's see. No, I guess that will work. Okay, we got to go with the big one. And hope for the best. Hope it's long enough. If it's not long enough, maybe I can just pry it out of there and I'll get some bigger ones another day. Okay, let's find the center first. Let's not get carried away. And let's make them the same distance just, just because. I usually don't measure, but let's go ahead. When you're trying to teach somebody to do something right, I think we should measure. Let's get a pencil. In case I made a mistake, I can erase it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to mark it half an inch because it's so big, it's going to come out that way, right? half an inch. That way the hole doesn't end up on the wrong side. <laughs> and we'll, we'll cut it, I mean we'll punch the hole on this side at the mark. And then, and then, Center is about right there. Okay, I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it. But it's there. That way I can erase it when I'm done. Now I can't see it. <laughs> Do you guys have the same problem with yours? You know, trying to find where that dot is. I know I do. It's like, please, where's the dot? Because once you get it in there, it's like there's no light hitting it. It's all in the shadows. You need to get like a flashlight or something. <laughs> That's what I say. Who needs a flashlight? Oops. I have to stand up for this. Holy moly. Did I wake you guys up? <laughs> Did you wake up from all the, all the bang? All right. Now, I don't know. I don't think these are, oops. Oh, I just lost that. I don't think these are long enough. No, I know these aren't long enough. Look at that. That ripped that thing up. Okay. Let's see if we can squish this. <laughs> Let's see if we can squish this down and make it work. Uh, we'll see. This is just practice, so, you know. 
This is how we find out. Right? 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 Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? <laughs> I always feel I'm doing this upside down. Am I doing this upside down? Help. 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 Does it go this way? Yes, right? No. Anybody? Anybody awake? This way, right? Oh, glue them down. Put some glue in there. If it doesn't, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. And that way, if it doesn't work, work, there's something in there. Very good idea. That's why I ask questions. Okay. So if it doesn't work, it'll at least be stuck in there. Woo! Very good. Turn it around. Wait a minute. I'm getting both. I'm getting both ways to put it on. See, I always get confused. I I've told you guys I have dyslexia, and I get totally confused if it's supposed to go this way or that way. So you guys better agree because I can only do this once and then it's done. My choose. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, people got to help me out here. Okay, I got to put another one on that side. Whoops. Turn over. <laughs> so it goes this way. Oh my goodness. That way. Okay. I'm going by what you say, Gwen. Because I have no idea what I'm doing. I always do it wrong. Or I feel like I always do it wrong. I even watched a video, and believe it or not, there was an instruction video on how to do this, and they showed both ways. So it was like, okay, if you guys, the professionals, don't know how to do it, how are we supposed to figure it out? I think it's just going to make a big mush, but we've got the, we've got the, um, we got the glue in there, and so I think we'll be safe, even if it makes a mess. Uh oh. No, wait a minute. <laughs> You're killing me, Gwen. This way? <laughs> or are you telling me to turn over? <laughs> Spine side up. Gotcha. Very good. All right. And do I have the right doohickey? See, there's like four things to choose, and I don't know which one to choose. You can tell I use this a lot. I just use it to make holes. <laughs> I don't hardly ever use it to put these things. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know which one of these to use. I've got this one. I know I'm pretty sure it's not that one. 
And that one, I don't know what that one's for. The black one, I don't know what that's for. I usually just use that one just because, just because, you know, because I don't know which one to use. There's the tool. That one, okay, just so we know, this one looks like a bowl to me. That looks like a bowl. So when you answer me what to use, if it's that one, that's that looks like a bowl to me. I don't know what the heck. That that's made out of copper. So let's say copper. This one has a brass look to it. And then there's that black one. I don't know what that's for. So which one do I use? The bowl, the copper, the brass, or the black one? The large one. <laughs> the bowl. Excellent. So the bowl needs to go up, right? Like that. That's the one I had. I only that's one thing I had right. I'm so excited. Okay. Here we go. And see now I can't even. How do you line it up? Because this thing. <laughs> I hate this. Because see, this is so small. I can't even tell when it's like over the bowl. There's got to be a better way of doing this. See, I don't I don't feel it catching or okay there it is oops shut up rosemary it just caught okay i'm gonna have to stand up and then we're gonna go oh no what happened hey people it worked oh my goodness okay let me line up the other one thank you thank you thank you everybody i feel better now Okay, whoops. Yeah, you can feel that little catch right there. Yay! I'm so happy. Happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. Yay, 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 yay. Okay. All right, enough of the dance. Oh, maybe it isn't enough of the dance. Hold on. Happy dance. <laughs> happy dance. Are we happy? Happy dance. <laughs> okay. We're all happy now here. Hey. Don't, don't be shy. Yes. go to bed now enough you've had enough attention Let's say good night okay so we are all happy campers me Baba Louie everybody's happy all right so now we need some papers to go in there kinds of papers that you would write in right 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 I think I need a little drink of something first. Where's my drink? Where's my juice? I got my juice. I got my juice. Not tea this time because I don't want to be up till 4 o'clock. Okay. Well, this is turning out pretty good, Debbie. I hope you're happy because I'm happy. I had no idea if this would work or not. <laughs> and it's so much easier than... You know, ripping it all apart and putting in a thin spine and all that stuff. So you can do this with any book. Yay! Okay, now before people start leaving, I needed to share some of the information. Um, for those of you that were not insomniacs with us last night, we'll work on that in a second. Okay, Patricia 
um, Stubbs is going to Africa to a um, 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 what am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm already forgetting. My brain is so fried. <laughs> the juice did not help. <laughs> um, she's going to an orphanage, right? Yeah, orphanage, yes. And so we kind of, it took us uh, about an hour or so. We came up with this plan of making these small size journals for her to take with her when she leaves. Anyone who wants to participate needs to have it in the mail by September 20th. The journals need to be no, the spine, no wider than an inch, very appropriate here, no wider than an inch, and no bigger than, um, no bigger than a golden book, because a few of them wanted to make some golden book journals. And the average golden book is um, eight by eight by six, right? Let me see. Kind of sort of. Little shy of eight. And this don't count the spine is six. So all right. So no wider than an inch. No bigger than eight by six. You need to try and keep it lightweight because um, there are 17 in the orphanage um, and we're going to um, send her stuff and she obviously has to pay for the weight, extra weight on her um, baggage, you know, on the plane. So we need to keep the stuff as, as light as possible as opposed to you know, like really big, heavy covers and, you know, really thick, heavy papers. Keep it kind of light. All right. Now, there are seven girls and nine boys. And um, the ages are from 2 to 17. And two of the one girl and one boy is of teenage age. They're like, I think, 16 or 17. And the rest are smaller children. Um. And that's pretty much what we've come up with. We decided that we don't want to, they're going to be what I would term as naked journals so that they can write in them. Um, they can do with them what they want. We aren't going to glue anything on the pages because where they live, it's extremely humid there. And so you don't want things warping and falling off and, you know, their journals looking ugly. So, we're not going to glue anything on. We um, are not going to washi tape anything down because that too will loosen up with the moisture and fall off. Um, so either staple things in if you want something secure or put some paper clips or something like that if you want to put things um, in the pages or sew them on, whatever you know, whatever you decide to do. But please don't do any. Um, gluing or washi tape. All right. Um, let me think. Um, right, right, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. Um, most of them are younger children. So we're going to put things in there like coloring pages, little pockets where they can put things and stickers. Um, because it has high adhesive, it isn't like the stuff that we would use. But and they're colorful and they're cute to look at. So stickers like you can get at the Dollar Tree, um, glue dots. Um, they thought shit. Patricia said that those would work. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, Darla. We were up to what. What was it, three or four? I don't remember what time it was. Well, depending where you live in the country. We were up till four o'clock in the morning. Um, and so we were going back and forth. What works, does, does what doesn't work, you know, what they would like. Um, boys over there, their main um, um, sport is soccer. So probably anything soccer related, the young boys would like that. 
and all girls are the same, you know, girls like anything that's frou frou, you know. Um, so what I, I was going to go this morning, but I didn't wake up in time. But what I'm going to do tomorrow is basically kind of go up and down the aisle of um, the Dollar Tree and see what kinds of little things, you know, might be able to put in their little packet. And, um, and so what we need to do is all you do is need to make one. I'm sure there's going to be at least, I mean, we know already there's already going to be 17 people that are going to do this. So, you know, they're just going to be kind of multiple. So you don't have to put pressure on yourself and say, oh, how many do I need to make? And just make one. One is fine and put little goodies in there. Or if you don't have time to make anything, we also suggested um, postcards. Um, if in the town that you live in, um, they have postcards that represent your town, you can get those postcards, write a little note on it, and send those to Patricia, and then she can put them in the journals that she does get so that you're still represented and, and they still get stuff from all over the place. They don't, you know, everybody doesn't have to contribute a journal. Postcards are wonderful. Um, and just write a little note to them, and then she can stick it in the little pocket that's in, that we'll have in the journals. Um, yes, like Darla says, um, maybe a little zipper pouch, you know, where you can put some pencils and stuff and erasers and things like that. Because I know at the Dollar Tree, they have some pretty cool um, craft stuff now. They're always adding different things. And they do have the colored pencils. And it's a wide variety just for a dollar. And that can be stuck in. And then if we put some um, um, coloring pages, you know, inside of the journal, then they have the stuff right you know, right away to, um, to use. Um, hey, Samantha. Now, um, the caregivers for these 17 children are just two. Uh, I'm assuming they're husband and wife. I don't know if they're brother and sister, husband and wife. I'm assuming they're husband and wife. I think that's what she said. And their name is Patrick and Daphne. So I'm sure, um, they would appreciate, you know, a little something, even if it's just a letter um, thanking them for their hard work. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we were talking about um, last night. If you want to um, participate, you can contact Patricia Stubbs um, on, um, on Facebook. Or you can contact me and I can contact her. But she needs to have them. We need to have them sent by the 20th. Um, so that she's not rushing at the last minute and packing and taking inventory and stuff like that. And I know it's kind of a short notice, but it just came out in conversation last night that she was going there. She wasn't asking for anything. She wasn't soliciting, you know, anything from us. You know, the conversation just kind of morphed and we just said, hey, we want to do this. And so that's why there's, you know, this amount of time. But you got three, you know, three weeks, two, three weeks. And what I'm going to do, my, my group doesn't know this yet, but <laughs> on the 8th in my group, um, we um, always do what's called the Flowish Journal Swap. And I've always got... The ladies are always wanting to do that every month. I told them, we'll keep doing it as long as you want to do it. We've been doing it for two years. And so, to, and tomorrow is the 8th. So they don't know it yet. But the swap that we're going to be doing to, uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, is we're going to make a little flowish journal. And we are going to send them to Patricia instead of sending them to each other. And that way they're going to have a little supply journal in addition to the journal that they can work in. So big surprise for the group tomorrow. If you're listening, <laughs> you're, a, you're a day ahead. The rest of the people don't know yet. All right, so any questions um, concerning this in general? Yeah, Patricia's on Facebook. Yeah, the last um, I did, we did a um, a live 
er, well, it was last night, went over to early this morning. So about the last hour and a half, I guess, of it is just us talking about this and kind of brainstorming about it. But I know that, um, you know, it isn't necessary for you to buy anything because, you know, I know just like me, all you got to do is walk around your stash. and You got plenty of stuff uh, to put into the journal. Now, the journal does not have to be hard bound at all. It can just be, you know, um, cardboard. It, it can be um, scrapbook paper, you know, like we make the... Um, you know, the, um, what do you call those uh, traveling, the notebook journals, you know? So, um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be one, um, one signature. It doesn't have to be sewn in whatever your abilities are. Um, they're going to be very appreciative. It doesn't have to be, um, all fancy. I'm trying to think of other things that things that we just kind of sort of take for granted because you got to figure their their supplies there are obviously limited because I'm sure um, they run that orphanage on donations so um, whatever they have I'm sure is in you know small quantity so I'm sure even simple things like, like Darla said, you know, pencils and erasers and things that we just kind of take for granted. And then if there's just like supplies, if you don't have time to make anything, um, if you just wanted to send Patricia like, you know, some pencils or something, and then she can uh, divvy them up, you know, to each um, little package for each person. Thank you, Darla. I knew Darla could do that. Yes, exactly. Like a simple thing, like a sharpener for pencils. Exactly. And then I don't know where I put them right now, but I oh here they are. I had these. Um, I got to round up the other ones. I know I have a mat. I have these fans. And so I thought it would be kind of cool because it's 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 very hot and humid in Uganda. So um, all little girls, you know, want to cool off with a bunch of fruit fruit. So so I'm gonna try and find my other ones. I don't want to send them if I don't have enough, you know, for all the girls. There's seven girls. So I think I do. I think I have enough. And then I was thinking, you know, a simple thing like maybe rulers, too. Things that are inexpensive. I have a little bo whole box of these, but I was thinking that's kind of getting kind of heavy, you know. So I got to be thinking about Patricia. Oh, and then some people suggested that they're going to send her, um, whatever they send her, they're going to send her, you know, anywhere from a dollar to five dollars to, um, to help defray the cost the additional cost of her luggage for the stuff that we're sending her to take. Cause I was saying, you know, yeah, we're, we're sending, we're sending her stuff and she's going to, you know, um, benefit in that way. But then we're burdening her in a way because now she's got to pay for extra weight for the luggage. And those of you that fly, you know, they stiff you every step along the way, charging you extra money. So, um, so there again, if you cannot do any books, you can't do anything else, maybe send her $5 to help in the, um, cost of the, um, of the, um, the baggage, whatever you guys can do. She's going to deeply appreciate it because she wasn't expecting any of this. So, um, every little tiny bit will be appreciated. And I think. Um, and you know the kids. You know how kids are. Kids love everything. Especially when they don't know they're getting something. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! 
Yes, Samantha, it's an orphanage in Uganda. She's been there before, and so she's returning. And so anyway, if you guys have any questions, you know, just, you know, let us know there. And Carla, Carla knows, remembers more than I do about the conversation. She was more awake than me. <laughs> and then you can contact either one of us on Facebook, and we'll be sure to uh, direct you to uh, Patricia. All right. So this thing, I think it's nice and dry. And okay, so this, we already know how to do this because the last time when we made that other journal, you know, we did make the, we made our own spine. So you can go back to that one and it's pretty much the same thing we did with this, right? We do the tape thing. We put, we'll put some, put the tape and then we put the paper. In here, we'll probably put some fabric to cover that up to make it look kind of cute. So we know how to do that. So what else would you do you need to know, Deb, as far as this one is concerned? I think this kind of is done, right? Because then you put this in there. Whoops. You can tie it inside or outside, whatever you like. And you're all set. Oops. I think, right? Boing. Yep. And the paper goes in there, and then you can take it in and out the way you want it. And then it'd be kind of cute if maybe you put some little little pocket here and here, or an envelope that you could stuff little things in. You know, depending on exactly how you're going to use it. If you're not going to glue anything down, then you probably wouldn't need that. But if you just want to collect little things, you might want to try something like that. And then, do you know how to make a pocket with a little gusset so that you can get more stuff into it? Because a lot of people put pockets, and I've noticed they put a pocket, and then they can't even get a piece of paper in and out of the pocket because they just, like, flatten that pocket on there. And glue it, and then it's like, okay, what good is that pocket for? You can't put anything in it. Okay, so I do it the real simple way. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Um, let me find some sturdy paper because this is tear. I can't make it out of that. I know. I like to make them myself. I like to make them out of um, manila folders. So then you'll get some scraps of that. We'll show you real quick how to do that. And you can always, um, you know, cover this up with paper or paint it or something to coordinate with your book. Let me get this stuff out of the way. For those of you that were with me when uh, yesterday, when I showed my my clay, <laughs> my 
my clay disaster. I'll show you what I did with it today. <laughs> that was another disaster, but oh well. <laughs> you just stick around me. I make, see, my goal is to make you feel good about yourself. Did you see what such a mess I make of things? Then you go, oh, I'm not so bad. I don't make that many mistakes. And then I make you feel good about yourself. All right. So, and, you know, I'm famous for not measuring anything. So, you know, that's another thing. So, we want it about that big. About. Kind of, sort of. And I don't have to give you like measurements because, you know, your book is going to be a, a different size anyway. So you're not going to, you don't need to know the measurements for these. All right. So. Even if they were just half that size. Okay, so we'll put one in the back and one in the front. And so what we need, and those will fit real good right there. So we just basically need to, let's see, how big do I want them? Let me talk to myself for a second. Maybe, let's just try two inches and we'll see if, it, if it's a nice size or not. And then you'll know if the ones you wanna do, if you want them bigger or smaller. Well, that's crooked. It's making the same size. And we'll need two for each, so let's cut four of them. Now everyone has their own way of doing, you know, making their little, their little folds and stuff. So I may be doing it wrong, <laughs> but it works for me. So, and this has that little thing there, so it's kind of hard. So I'm going to have to use my scissors to cut this. Okay. And then this is where I get my dyslexia really kicks in and drives me crazy because you have to do some folds and I forget if it's, you know, an inzy or an outsy. So what I do is I fold it in half first, I think, and then fold it in half. Then fold it in half again this way. So you're going to end up with quarters. And then fold that back this way. And you want to um, make sure they're pretty flat. So use something. So you're basically going to have an M, right? You need two of those.
All right. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can have them, you know, go this way. Or you can do it this way. Glue it in the front. And then you glue that back there like that. I kind of like to hide it for whatever reason. <laughs> no special reason, but I do. And then you can also, you can not have any back to it and the back is your book. Or you can create a back to it and put another piece right there and create that opening like that. It's sort of up to you. But when I usually use these, I'm not using, I don't usually have a high contrasting um, color because when I use these, I'm usually putting them on top of another piece of manila folder that I've lined something with. So it's not so obvious that, you know, it's sitting on something different. So if you kind of envision it that way, you wouldn't need the back. It's kind of like redundant. So if I'm making any sense right now. I hope so. Oops, that way. So just so that everything, that you can, so that you can see it all, I'm just going ahead and leave the high contrast so you can see what I'm actually doing or else it might look kind of goofy. <laughs> it might look a little goofy. All right, so now what I'm going to do now you, I don't think I have any small, matter of fact, I know I don't. I ran all out. I don't have any double stick tape, but that would be an ideal thing right here. If you put a piece of double stick right there and put that on there, that would be fantastic. But if you're going to do it this way, I don't like using double stick tape if it's in the inside. Not when it comes to pockets. And I'm going to tell you what. There's always going to be a little section. Either your tape is over too much or it's in too much. It's never going to be perfect. And that means when you put stuff in, if it's over too much, it's going to stick. If it's in too much, you might get your little piece of paper accidentally inside there. Then it sticks to the tape. Um, to me, I just don't like using double stick tape when it comes to areas that you're sticking other things into. That's just my personal opinion. I stick with the glue and then you don't get all that. Oh, I can't get that out. And you see people struggling trying to get something out um, because it's stuck somewhere. OK. So. Let's. Start with this one, and I'm going to do it on the, I think, on the inside. Now, remember, you would, if you're going to decorate these or stamp them or paint them, do that first. Do to everything that you want um, paper on it or painted before you, you move on to the next step. So let's just put some glue down. You can use any kind of glue that you have. I've even used um, oops. I've even used a glue stick. Some of those glue sticks, man, they're pretty heavy duty. 
So just make sure you don't go over one of those mountains and you'll be just fine. Let's see. And then where did my other one go? Oh, there it is. And just make sure everything is going in the same direction because I've made mistakes before. <laughs> many. Many, many, many. Line it up as best you can. Make sure it doesn't go over the mountain. Because if you do, you will be stuck down in the valley. Let me tell you, it won't look pretty. Are you following so far? <laughs> Down in the valley. Boing. All right. Now, what I like to do to have a finished edge, which I would have done it before. I remember I told you, do everything before you glue it. What I normally do is I sew down here. Now, I sew it at this stage, and I'll tell you why. Because when you sew it, now you've got this here already connected. Because you're going to either have to glue or do something because you want the bottom to be flat so that this has that little gap where it can open. But obviously, you don't want things going through. And when your book closes, you want it to be flat. So this is when I would sew right here. So... I think I just might run and go do that just so you can see how it works. I'll be right back. I threaded my machine wrong. <laughs> so don't look at my stitching. The threads were all out. <laughs> and I don't know if I had to rethread that thing again. I'll be gone forever. So don't look at my stitches. Okay. <laughs> all right. So pretend that that is a really good, a really good job there. <laughs> And then all you have to do, and then I would have sewed up here also. And then what you do is you put your glue here, here, and here. And 
you have you have a, a ample area to put cute things and you can cut a little um, you know a little thingamajigger here to get in and out of I like how Jessica rounds these off I learned that from Jessica and then you have plenty of room to put your goodies in there and it isn't um, you know so flat you can't put anything in so I hope that helps you figure that one out I don't want to glue that down because I did such a bad job of the, <laughs> the stitching. <laughs> I'm going to do that one over. <laughs> I didn't want you sitting here forever. I have this machine. I, it's a very inexpensive machine. And, when, and I've had expensive machines in the past, so I know the difference. And this machine drives me crazy when it comes to threading. When, when that arm goes up, where the little hole is after you've, you've threaded down and around and you come up and you you're supposed to put it there in that section that goes up and down with the foot that little hole is inside of the machine it never pops up above or out it's inside the machine and so to go in there and thread it even if you can get the thread in through the hole then you can't there's no way to grab the actual thread to pull it back out. I have to get little, oh, it's a mess. So even though when it comes to sewing and everything, it's great. But when it comes to threading it, oh, my gosh, it's such a pain, a total pain. Anyway, so there you go. Another idea that you incorpor incorporate into your journals if you have never done that before it's a great idea and you can make them this way, you know, where they open up like that. So the stuff doesn't fall out. And you know, like if you, some people put them like that, but then you have a tendency of things will fall out. But if you want a long one this way, you can make it long, put it in this direction. And that way, hopefully your stuff, you know, won't fall out because it'll lean up against this. You put it here. It might fall out that way. Just an idea. And for sure, don't put it that way. <laughs> oh. oh, Karen, you want some information? Yes, hold on. Uh oh. I will get you some info right here, real quick. And I'm going to write up a little um, thing on my Facebook group because um, they don't know it yet, but they're going to be making some tomorrow. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions after our, we explain some stuff, if anybody has any questions, you can contact me or Darla or Patricia, and we can uh, give you the correct information. But these are journals that will be going um, to an orphanage in Uganda, and there are 17 in the orphanage and or 16 I thought she said 17 but it looks like it might be 16 because there's she said there was seven girls and nine boys most of them are young children uh, but two of them are teenagers um, a girl and a boy and so we decided to make some small little journals uh, for her to take as a gift um, to the kids and um, the spines shouldn't be any any wider than an inch because then they're going to start getting heavy and bulky because she's got to take them on the plane and no bigger than a golden book because a few wanted to make some out of some golden books and a golden book on average is eight by six so the journals need to be um, eight by six or smaller. The spine needs to be no more than an inch. Um, the kinds of things that we're going to be putting in the journal, we don't want you gluing anything down in the journal. We don't want you to put washi tape anywhere on the journal because where they live, it's extremely humid 
and all these things are just going to warp and fall apart. So you can use um, like paper, um, paper clips or staple things down or sew things down or something like that. But in general, these are just kind of naked journals where the kids can do whatever they want to do and you can add little supplies for them to play with. Um, she said that um, no glue sticks or anything like that because she says the glue sticks just kind of fall apart because it's so humid there. But the glue, um, what do you call those things? <laughs> Help me out, Carla. <laughs> The, um, oh, I went blank. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those little sticky things. Um, 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 yeah, you know what I mean. Carla will fill in the blanks for me. Um, we thought of putting in like, um, coloring book pages, lined pages. Yeah, glue dots. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Um, you know, just things that kids would like to uh, draw and color on. Then we kind of expanded our ideas to things that maybe supplies that we have that um, we just kind of take for granted, like pencils, pencil sharpeners, erasers. Um, we know at the dollar, like for instance, at the Dollar Tree, you can get some colored pencils, a wide variety of pencils for just, you know, a dollar. Um, she said that the kind of stickers that they have, like at the Dollar Tree, that would be fine to get because adhesive is different and they can just lay that on the pages. So those kinds of stickers are okay. Um, we need to mail it by the 20th so she can have them, um, when she leaves, she's leaving the first week of October and, um, the caregivers are Patrick and Daphne. If we aren't um, able to make a journal, then maybe a few little supplies, like I said, the pencils or erasers or things like that. If you can't do that, perhaps a postcard from the area that you live in, you can write a little note and um, she could put the postcards inside of the journals. Um, and I'm sure they'd love, you know, reading a message from somebody that, that's thinking about them. And so would Patrick and Daphne. I bet you they would like a little note of appreciation for the, the work that they do. And um, does that cover it? Oh, and if you can't do any of that, uh, maybe send her $5 or so um, to go toward because all the stuff we're sending her is going to cost her more um, on the plane. The plane's going to charge her. I'm, I'm guessing once you get another, you know, another um, um, suitcase, it's probably, they're going to probably going to charge her $90 to $120 for another piece of luggage. So if we could send, you know, five bucks or something to her, to um, not burden her to pay extra for the stuff that we're sending. Um, that might be it. And try to keep the, the journals light, you know, because again, we're talking about the weight that she's going to, you know, she's going to have to um, pay, you know, probably by the weight. And if it goes over just a tiny bit, then it cost some more, just like our, you know, when we ship our stuff here on the post-it, they do the same thing to us. You go over a tiny bit and it's doubled, right? Especially like for international. And I think, I think that's pretty much it. The boys over there are into soccer as opposed to, you know, baseball and football here. Soccer is the, is the thing the boys if you find any little stickers or stuff like that and um, that might be it now I know other people are going on today I don't remember everybody I know there's quite a few people going on actually 
and I'm sure Carla knows who they are. <laughs> I can't keep up with everybody. Okay, so Selena's going on. Do you know what time Selena's going on, Debbie? Okay, so Jessica and Carla are on now. And they're talking about rescheduling. Oh. Okay, 7 o'clock is who? That's Selena. 7 o'clock her time. Okay, so Selena's going on at 7, which means that's in a half hour, right? If I'm calculating right, it's almost 5.30 here, which means it's 6.30 over there. So in about a half hour, Selena's going on. And so, Darla, you're seeing that um, Carla and Jessica are thinking of rescheduling. Okay. Well, I guess we can blab for a half hour. Oh, I know what we can blab about. Okay, you guys that were with me yesterday, uh, remember those, um, I'm sure you remember. I got to get something dark because it won't show up on the white. Let's do it on here. You remember all my complaining about the clay? <laughs> and they all broke or they were breaking well I just went ahead and broke them all and then I glued them on to these little wood tags that I had and so at least I could save them I cracked them even more so it looked like it was on purpose and um, and then I'll come back and I'll I'll figure out what kind of finish I'm gonna what I'm gonna do if I'm just gonna stain them or I'm going to paint them. I'm going to add color or if I want it to look rustic. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of thinking of the rustic look because that's kind of what I like, the grungy kind of look. So um, I think they'll come out kind of cool at the end. But I'm not sure how to make them to be right, you know, not having to break them up and glue them on wood. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do some practicing on that. That just did not work at all. Now, see, even on there, it, it's still... A little wonky there. I could press that right there, and those two would bust right now. <laughs> it is just too funny. <laughs> hey, I wonder what the alcohol inks would do to that. I wonder. But I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just antique it. I think that's what I want to do. I think. Ooh, alcohol ink. You guys think it would work? Should we try the alcohol ink and see what happens? No, I don't have a flower press. Someone had suggested that I just put a weight, you know, but because I, I stamped on them, if I put a weight on it, it would just smush it and, you know, the stamping would disappear. So... See, I just pushed that, and I can feel it still moving. <laughs> Whatever I do to it, I'm going to have to put a coat of, of Mod Podge over it or something to make everything kind of stick. And I put a lot of glue underneath. It's pretty stuck. It's stuck on there. I did that this morning. Not 4 o'clock in the morning, I mean, when I got up this morning. Uh-oh. Okay, let's... Oh, dear. Okay, let's try... Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I threw, you know, remember the one I did with the, the had the four little birds? That thing, even though I cracked it, it was horrible. Let me use, let me find them, and use those pieces just to see what happens to the ink on them. I think they're in here somewhere. There you go. Oh, here they are. Here's the ones that didn't work. I broke these, and they just... They came out pitiful. I couldn't even, I couldn't even save them. So, um, let's try that. Where are my eggs? Where are the eggs? 
Here's the ink. Let me get a piece of paper that has some color. So we're doing all that white. I don't see anything. Oh, here's a beige. That'll help a little bit. Oh, I know. I'll just use the um, file folder. That'll give us a little color to work with. A little bit of contrast. Well, not too much, but enough. It gives us enough. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to start with these, see what happens. Oh, see, I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's use some brown on here because I think I want to go with the earthy tones anyway. I think. Let's see what happens. It'll probably just suck it up because it's so porous. Well, well, I guess it does look kind of cool, huh? I thought I had another other brownie kind of color. I know I do. There we go. <laughs> Johnny, you missed the whole thing. It actually worked. That spine. We made the small spine and it actually worked. Now I'm just testing my uh, clay that didn't work and see if we want to do this or not on the on the real ones these are just the this is just a test one i don't know what do you guys think yes no maybe it actually looks like my rest material <laughs> don't you think that's what it reminds me of What color is this? Peach. This is the one that CJ got me. Ooh, that looks pretty. Oh, there's Patricia. You have any questions? We went over all the info, Patricia, that we could remember. Whoa, that green is dark. And so um, we're going to have them either, if they have any more questions, they're going to contact me or Darla, and now you. <laughs> and we told them that you were on Facebook. So if you hear from people you don't know, keep you need to look on your inbox, you know, on the the inbox thing, you know, where that file where you don't know people goes. Okay. So what do you guys think? Should we try it or not? Yeah, it is sucking up all the ink really bad. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but it might be a waste of ink. I'm going to see. I mean, because I can, I mean, these things are, you know. Oops. These things aren't, you know, like, oh, they're so wonderful. You can't ruin them. 
we're just seeing how to make the best out of something that I already ruined. I have this um, glaze. I like working with glazes myself. Let's see. I have this stuff. I haven't used it too much. It's, um, who's it by? By Pat. Let me see what colors I have. They're transparent, so that's why I kind of like them. I have sepia. What's this color? Ooh, crimson. Okay, let's just play with these and see what happens. So the worst comes to worst, I can just paint them with a bunch of gesso and start all over, right? That's what I tell everybody. Don't get intimidated. There's always paint. <laughs> so I got to follow my own advice. <laughs> There's always paint to cover everything up. All right. And this thing's kind of, this stuff's kind of weird. It's very weird. I need to get a little brush and I need to get a little bit of water. And use a gentle brush that you can pounce into those little holes. And we'll just use this right here as a little bit of a palette. See, I like old gringy colors like this. Eek. And this is a... It just says transparent acrylic soft gel paint. We'll be the judge of that. Let's do one at a time. And then once we get some of this, maybe throw a little bit of ink on it because it's already kind of wet. It's not so dry, right? I'm guessing. I don't know. Oh, that's the bottom. And then get yourself a little, a little wipey white white. Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it. Look at that. Ooh, encaustic. Why didn't I think of that? That would be cool. Maybe that's how I'll finish it off. I like that. I don't know about you guys. Let's see what the... Um, this is crimson. Let's see what crimson looks like on this one. Oops, that hasn't been opened. I wonder if the other one's been opened. Yep. And we'll just mix that up together with that other because that's the way we work.
Look, I just broke that one. <laughs> Glue time. Oh, no. We meant we wanted it to be like that. That's right. I forgot. Okay. It was meant to go like that. Forget the glue. It's done. Oh, pretty cool. I like that. I think we need to get a little bit. Let's mix a little bit of each on both of them and see what happens. I think we have a winner. I like that. What do you guys think? Hey, Cheryl. Okay, now let's go crazy. Let's go a little cray cray and put a little bit of this. Um, let's see. I don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to find out. Be ready. <laughs> oh, looking kind of cool. It's still soaking it up, but not as much as it did before. I'm liking it. Let's put a different color on this one. Do I want the coral? Ooh, poppy feel. Darla, don't look. Ooh, yeah, I don't have a yellow I might in the other one but those aren't open oh wait is this open oh this one is open I lied ooh how about if we do it a controlled and then I put the red in between <laughs> I'm easily amused. Ooh, there's a lot on there. Let's make sure we don't get it all over the place. Ooh, I knew that was going to happen. How did I know that? I just did. Oh, shoot. I didn't want that to happen. Rats. That's what they made sandpaper for. Because you know this stuff can be sanded. So, where's my sandpaper? Well, I probably don't even need sandpaper. See? <laughs> okay, that's better. Then I'll put some of the brown back. So never fear, you have an eraser. It may be looking odd, but you get an eraser. Okay. So now I just need to get some more of this googly gop to cover up that mess.
See? You can fix up the mess. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks pretty cool. I think it needs to be toned down a tiny bit. It doesn't look artifacty enough. Tone it down a little bit. Pretty cool. Oh, the clay that I used? Well, trust me, I would not recommend it. <laughs> It didn't do what it was supposed to. Where, where did I put it? I think it's by, um, what did I do with it? I just had it here. Um, see, I get things out of the way, and then I lose everything. <laughs> where did I put it? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. I checked myself because I actually put it away. It's just the Crayola Air Dry Clay. And it's been nothing but a headache. This was not the intended result, even though I like it. Um, they they curl it curled up as it was drying, and it looked like a teeter totter. And so I just got mad and smashed them <laughs> so they would lay flat and they just cracked. And so then I glued them on to these um, wood tags that I had. Um, so it was a long way getting here. It wasn't an intended route. But I, I think you should make do with what you got and play with it. I have some other stuff I'm going to play with. And um, you may know the difference. Like on the on the packaging on this, it, it refers to it as clay. And then the other stuff um, that I have, it refers to itself as paper, paper something material. It doesn't use the word clay at all. So I think they're completely different. And maybe they work differently. I don't know. But I'm going to try the other one and see if it does the same thing. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. That red's a little too too red for me. I don't know if you see it red, but. So, Debbie, does the paper clay work better? Because I don't like how this works. I mean, I like how it, I'm getting a finish on it, but I don't like that I wasn't able, oh, that I wasn't able to, you know, do what I wanted to do. Well, that came out kind of. Well, that's not what I wanted, but that's okay. Let's fix it up. Okay, so see, Debbie's got to teach me what I'm doing wrong. So is is the um, paper clay easier to work with? It doesn't crack like this does because this is a mess. Eraser time.
Let me finish this and I'll go see if somebody is answering my question. I can't do this and read at the same time. <laughs> you know I'm slow that way. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's a little darker. It was a little too um, too bright. I mean, for the look that I'm trying to go for, it was a little too bright. That looks better, I think. <sighs> what is that? Whatever it is, it won't move. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do have those little silicone molds, too. I haven't used um, either one of these in that. I've just used the hot glue in those molds. And I've used the silicone, the liquid silicone in those molds, too. Okay, so... When I chart, when I put the ink on there, though, for some reason it seems to bleed on here because it's, it's not drying like normal alcohol ink would dry. It's kind of strange. It's really very strange. It's like it reactivates it somehow. See, it's bringing up the red. It's very strange. I cannot tell you how strange this is. But I like it. I can live with it. I'm definitely going to put a sealer on it because it seems like each thing I do, it activates everything. Reactivates everything. All right. Okay, so those two are done. And then I'll just, um, I'll seal them. Doesn't it look like weathered, like weathered driftwood or something? Like off from the beach? The bottom part. All right, so I have two more. But I want to try something totally different just to see what kind of look we can get. But I'm not sure what, what to put on there. I've got um, um, I'm trying to think. I do have stain. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do. Where's my stain? Okay, I have this gel stain. I don't have like, oh, I think I have real, real stain. Wood stain, but I also have this gel stain. Let me see. Yeah, where is my real stain? It must be out in the um, other work area. Like the real work area, the real house <laughs> work area. Let me see what I have here. Um, I have one that says maple and I have one that says oak.
Okay, thanks, Rashana. We'll meet you over there later with Selena. Um, Carla, what did um do you know what um um ah, what Jessica and them decided? What did I apply to the clay? Um, I, um, I put some of these, which is called mixed media, transparent acrylic soft gel paint. <laughs> so I put a little bit of crimson and where's the other one? And a little bit of the sepia and then I threw in a little bit of alcohol ink so we just played with it back and forth um, some is on top of the other and some I wiped away but for the most part that's what we use this glaze and some alcohol inks and that's how we got these finishes so now we're going to try something new See what happens. So let's try it here on the little fake one first, the broken one. And this one is, um, this is by Americana and they have some gel stains. Supposed to be also translucent. It's probably real similar to this stuff. And this one's oak and this one is maple. So one's just a little redder than the other. So let's see what happens. Carla's having trouble with her internet. Oh, okay. All right. So they're still basically coming on. It's just not right now. All right. We'll keep an eye on our notifications. See what happens. All right. I'm going to take some off the lid. Oh, well, it's very saturated. And when you wipe it, it almost all comes off. So I don't like it saturated. And I don't like how it all comes off. Yeah, it almost all comes off. Let's try the other color, see what happens. I mean we can we can do it and see what how we can play around with it like we did the others. It just seems like glorified watered down paint to me. Yeah. Nothing special. All right. Any other suggestions? I'm going to pass on that because I think it's just going to be a bad version of this. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, why don't we try some of the, um, you know what I mean, I know you know what I mean. Some of the color shift. And again, if we don't like it, there's always gesso. We'll put some of these and then we'll antique it. How about that? I think that would look super cool. Let's see what colors you want to use. Do we want to go with like the autumn look? Or, no, that's metallic. I don't want to do the metallic. I just want to do the color shift. So we got 
Nope, that's neon. You don't want to do that. And you just pull out. So I don't have too many of the colored ships, but. But what I do have is, I like how they look. I think they're pretty. I think that's it. Oh, and I have the black. Forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Okay, so that's it for that. Okay, we'll do one with the autumn, kind of sort of autumn colors. Oh, but that's pretty much what we did with this one, right? We have the yellow and we have the orange, just reddish. So, okay, we don't have one with this kind of a blue. Let's try one of them with this kind of a blue, see what happens. And because the colors shift, let's just put it over the whole thing. And then we'll antique it and see what happens. I think it will look pretty cool. She said with confidence. Make sure you have a bad brush so you can get inside all those holes. If you haven't worked with the color shifts, they are just beautiful paints. It doesn't matter what color you get. You'll have fun. You can see how they shift. <laughs> That's why they're called. All right, so and then I'll let that dry a little bit. Now we can come back with the black color shift and see what happens and goes inside the cracks and we can wipe that down. That might look kind of cool. And then if it's too shiny, then we can come back with one of these, these other colored ones. I haven't even opened this one. Okay, here comes the spooky part. See what happens. Ah. Oh. Look at that. I think we have a wiener. Look how pretty. Ooh, look. If that isn't pretty, you can go home. <laughs> Color shift is the way to go. 
Holy moly. All right, let's do the other one with a different color. Let me put the lids on. I know myself. Oops. Okay, so we use this color, right? Which is weird because it looks like this color. But that's what the shift does. Okay. I guess I guess we need to try the orange. That's all I can say. We got to try the orange. Just try not to knock anything over, Rosemary. Uh-oh. Is Selena on already? I didn't even notice the time. Car Carla, I mean Carla. Darla, is Selena on already? Ooh, that looks pretty. Pretty, pretty. I like it. Okay, let it dry a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I hardly ever get notifications, so I don't even go by that anymore. Well, we'll just keep playing. Who wants to go buy stuff? You guys can go buy stuff. And those that don't have any money left, you can stay and see <laughs> how this comes out. I'm one of those that don't have any money left. <laughs> okay. Let's try it again. All right, time. Ooh. The key is these color shifts. That is because you could have put any color down there and put black over it, and it would not give you these crazy colors that that color shift does. Look at that. I got to come up with some ideas to do other things to do with these colors with this black it's so pretty and even with this crazy clay that doesn't work i like it so you see you start off with one intention and who knows what you end up with last night we were just goofing off and we end up with making presents for uganda now was that our intent last night? No. Oh my goodness, look at that. Can you guys see how pretty that is? Holy moly. She wasn't on for... Oh, seven. See, I was doing it backwards, huh? Okay, see, I'm telling you, my dyslexia, I do everything backwards. Okay, no problem. We're all good then. 
All right, so let's flip this over and let's see what we what we ended up with. I love how those came out. I might have to put some paint over these now. <laughs> I mean, these are pretty in their own way too, but oh my goodness. This is just Uh, I wish I had a brown of this. That would look cool, too, but I don't. All right, so with this one, I'm just going to play with it. I'm just going to play with these. I wonder what would happen if we put yellow on some of this over here and then came back with the black. Let's just play. Come on. Remember, there's always gesso. Halfway clean this brush. I'm not going to put it on everything. I'm just going to put it on the the woodsy stuff. Because you know when we wipe it away, it's going to look really cool underneath. Well, at least we're hoping it's going to. And the black's going to go in there. Okay, let's let that dry. And figure out what color to put on this one. And so it's already got the little rosy hue to it. So let's go ahead and put this one and see what happens. Now, you know, it looks a little freaky now, but you know what happens when you put the magic black on there. All right. Okay. So everybody has their style for drawing. Ta da <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hey Donna. We're just goofing off. We finished a little project and we moved on to a couple of others. We have no plan. I don't know if you did this, but when I was in grammar school, and it just reminded me of looking at this. When we were in grammar school, we had an art project where we got a um, paper plate, but the real stiff kind, like the Chinette paper plate. 
And then for a whole week, we were supposed to save up eggshells. And we brought them into school. And we cracked all the eggshells. And we glued them on that plate. And then glued on some flowers or something. I don't remember exactly what. And we spray painted the whole thing gold or something. It was pretty, it was pretty sad. But it reminded me of how cool this would, this whole thing would look with eggshells. Don't call me crazy. Try it. <laughs> I think it would look really cool. I see some jewelry or something, huh, Cheryl? <laughs> we'll make them and Cheryl will sell it for us. Okay, this is a little drier. Let's put this in first. This color to me isn't as dramatic as the, as the other two. What do you guys think? I think it may be because I don't have, there's not as many cracks to highlight the, maybe I didn't put enough black. It's just not, it's not, um, I don't know, it's just not speaking to me like the other ones did. <laughs> Speak to me. Speak to me. Is it just me or you guys too? Oh, that's a little better. Maybe I didn't have enough black on there. Maybe it was a little skimpy on the black. Looks better. But it still doesn't have that wow factor like the other one does. I mean, it's pretty, but it's not doing it for me like the other one did. Okay, let's see what this one does. Hi, Dina. We're messing around. We have no idea what we're doing. But we keep doing it just the same. All right, Let's see if we have enough black on that one. Ooh, I already know I'm going to like this one.
And where it looks pretty. I don't know if you can see the shift as well as I can see it. I like it. Pretty cool. Okay, let's clean this up and You think too much of the pink rub? Yeah, something's wrong with that one. I don't like that one at all. I mean, seriously. <laughs> it's just not doing anything for me. I might have to cover it back up with something else. But we used all the colors, right? We used the yellow. That was the yellow. That was that blue. And that was that. We didn't do the turquoise. Let's go over it with that and see what happens. It can't be any worse. And what we got, yeah, because I keep thinking that's the turquoise, and it's not. It's this. So let's let's see what happens. Oops, sorry. It might look kind of cool with the pink coming through. And let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> let's just do the whole thing. See what happens. Let that dry out a little bit. Boy, I'm a mess. I'm getting hungry. I've only had breakfast, but I had that late because I got up late, so. All right, black time. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with these, actually. That's what they're going to end up being on front of a journal page. I'm going to do it with my eco print papers inside and give it a outdoorsy natural something something. <laughs> that was my original intent before it all went wrong but even though it all went wrong it's still going to end up maybe a little cooler than what I intended. So it's all good. Pretty wet, but it's okay. 
Oh, look, some of the pink's coming through. Oh, this is kind of like cool. I think the blue wasn't dry, but it's going to, that's what's going to make it cool. So it's going to make some of the pink come through. Or this thing's too wet, one of the two, whatever. It's going to look cool. I can already tell. Yep, I like it. Isn't that cool? I like this. Oh, dear. Now another thing I have to keep trying. Oh, dear. I have just way too many things that interest me. Way too many. Okay. I love my mistakes. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Good thing it's not oil-based or I'd really be in trouble. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, these are going to look pretty cool. You know what I might even do? You know, it looked pretty cool is if I got some, um, some of my copper tape and put it around here and then soldered it. Wouldn't that look cool? That would really make it different, as if it wasn't already different. I'm going to forget what colors I use. Okay, so that's, that's that one, because I, I really like that. Or, it, wait. Yeah, it's this color, right? Because this one's the yellow. Ah, confusing myself. You know what I really want to do now that I'm seeing this? You know me and my bugs. I have a bug stamp. And I got to see if it will stamp into the clay. Wouldn't these look cool if you saw a big giant bug right there? Perfect. That would be cool. I can see a bug right there. All right. You don't do bugs. <laughs> well, Betty, I mean, Betty, I'm Debbie. You, can you tell? I'm losing it already. Um, somebody has to like the bugs. And if it has to be me, that's okay. Oh, now I got to cover up the back. I don't think I have to uh, encaustic these anymore. These already make a statement on its own. Because I thought I'd, you know, fix them up by doing, but I don't think I have to. It would mute all of the iridescent because, um, you know, it would filter the, the light hitting it. So it's better off just leaving it the way it is. I like it. So what are we going to do next time? Thanks, Teresa, for coming. Okay, give me a plan, you guys. Next time we meet up, what are we going to do? I like having a goal instead of just, you know, coming on and 
not having a a goal. What are we gonna do? You need to tell me before I fall asleep. I gotta go get me something to eat to wake up. Plus I'm hungry. I bet you my husband's hungry too. You know he's helpless when it comes to food. He feeds the dogs. He even makes okay, here's the here's the funny part. My husband will because my dogs love eggs. Uh, they love broccoli. I mean, they, they eat everything that we eat. And my husband will make eggs for the dogs. I don't think my husband's ever cooked me an egg since we've been married. But he will, he will, um, he will make it for the dogs. Let's see. And um, he'll make some broccoli for our little elderly, little our big elderly dog that needs you know a lot of vitamins and protein and he loves his broccoli so my husband will make him broccoli i don't think he's ever made me broccoli um what else does he make for them he will get parts of the chicken like maybe some parts that we have left over from a rotisserie chicken or something and then he'll boil it up for them and make them some soup some broth i don't think he's ever given me broth even when i had the flu let's see what else does he do for the dog um, <laughs> the list does go on, <laughs> but he, on the other hand, is like the dogs. He just sits there and waits for me to give him something. <laughs> so I might go and get him a little, um, milk bone <laughs> and toss it to him while I go figure out what we're going to eat. <laughs> uh, oh, was somebody asking what kind of paints these were? Gina, yes. These right here are by Folk Art. They're called Color Shift. I don't know how many colors they have. I think they have maybe around eight or nine different colors. And um, they have them online on Amazon. But if you live close to a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby, I would suggest that you get them when they're either on sale or you can use your coupon because they're, they're not cheap for these small little, you know, I think this, I forget what these cost. I think there's something like, I don't know. I'm thinking they're close to $5 for each one. And I happened to stumble on these about two years ago. Um, when you know how sometimes they have the 75, I mean, 70% off and stuff like that. And so I think I got mine for like a dollar something, but they're not cheap for being cheap paint, <laughs> but they go, you know, obviously it goes a long way and it's pretty spectacular, you know, the final product. So, um, do I do a curved a spine? Um, I have done them in the past. I think they're a pain. Ha, no ton in. You know, there. Not, yeah, I was almost going for a joke, but I didn't go there because a curved spine really does hurt. But anyway, never mind. Um, I know how to make them, and there's like so many different ways to make them. I sort of like gave up on them because it became sort of like a trend to do the curved spine. Okay, let me. Oh, let me backtrack. I'm an anti-trend person. So if I start doing something and then I notice, hey, wait a minute, everybody's doing something like that, I immediately stop doing it. <laughs> and the curved spine became a trend. So I just stopped doing it. I haven't done them in over a year. Um, there is this one woman. I'm going to find her name. She's the one I learned it from. She shows you step by step um, how to do the curved spine. She shows you how to do the um, fabric over, you know, the die cuts and stuff like that to give that really beautiful embossed look. Um, she shows you step by step for free how to do it all. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't remember her name right now. Um, I can't remember her name, but um, she, she's got it all laid out very simply. And you go, oh, is that all it is? <laughs> no, 
No, Nick the Booksmith charges. This lady does it for free. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is, Zoe. Yes, 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 yes. She shows you everything, um, pretty much everything that Nick shows you, but Zoe does it for free. Yeah. Um, do I know how to make a petite look fabric? Um, what does that mean, Debbie? When you say the look, you mean like fake stuff or? I'm not sure. Are you talking with um, doing it with the um, with the wax? Is that what you're referring to, Debbie? Um, I'm not sure of of, of exactly. Maybe I just haven't seen it done the way you're saying, Debbie. The only way I know is for you to do the masking on it with the wax and then dyeing them, you know, to do the look. I'm sure there's an other, another look. I'm just not familiar with it. So I guess my answer is no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can I ask you all a question? Hubby just asked me, what do you want for your birthday from Amazon? I'm very new. Okay. Okay, Gina. Hold everything. The biggest mistake all of us, any of us that's been doing this for a while, they will all tell you the same thing. We got way too much stuff, way too much a variety of stuff, and too much duplicate stuff. So use your money wisely. What is your favorite thing to do? And don't spend all your money at one time. Like, do you like to make journals? Do you like to do mixed media? And when I say, even if you don't do it now, what are you attracted to? What are the videos you watch the most? You know, what kind of an artist out there do you want to emulate? You know, the kind of work that they do. So once you figure that out, then we can tell you what to do. <laughs> We're real good with advice. <laughs> oh, Lucy, what's the fun in going and buying something when you have to, like, get a headache and learn how to make it? <laughs> That's half the fun. <laughs> Gina, you don't need everything. That's my point. <laughs> you don't need everything. Like, for instance, I'm going to give you, for instance, every time I saw a cool stamp out there, I thought I needed it. Oh, that's such a cool stamp. I don't have any stamps. Run out and go get the stamp. Someone else show. oh, I need that stamp. It's so cool. Do you know I have stamps right now? I need to do a D stash. You know what? Too bad. You know, your um, Amazon money can't apply to, to D stashers because I have so many stamps I'm going to get rid of. And, you know, if you've gone to see stamps, they're not cheap. I'm going to get rid of almost all of my stamps. I've already gotten rid of a lot of them. CJ got some of my stamps. We did a little private sale. But I have a bunch of stuff. I need to get rid of those. Okay. Then you're going to see somebody that has coloring books and they color in there. You're going to want all those kinds of pens that they have. You're going to want all the tips that they have. And then you're going to realize that once you get them all, you can't color in like they do. You can't blend like they do. So that means you don't want to do it anymore. So now you have like four or five different sets of all of these pens that you're never going to use because you're not going to color in your coloring book ever again. And you bought probably six of them with your Amazon card. <laughs> So that's why I'm saying you, you really do. 
<laughs> you really do need to um, um, you know, kind of get serious about what you need. And if you think you want everything, get one. one. One, you know, I like color shifts. Don't buy all nine colors. Buy one of them, right? Um, I like the the inks. Don't buy all forty of them. Buy one of them, and play with them. And then when you find out, yeah, I really, really love working with alcohol inks. Then go splurge and buy all the colors you want. But don't do it at the beginning. Trust me. We've all made that mistake. All of us. <laughs> I know, Gina. I know. It's a painful, it's a it's a painful course we go through. <laughs> See, that's what I need, you. And how many, how many of those colors do you actually use? See, <laughs> you already know what I'm telling you is the truth. Wait a minute, Tina. Are you being funny? <laughs> oh, Debbie. He shouldn't be listening because then he's not going to, you know, he's going to wonder why you're buying all this stuff. Rosemary said don't buy everything. <laughs> Come on, give her good advice, you guys. No, but well, so so serious, you know, we're, we're going to do an intervention for you right now. <laughs> what do you really like to do? If you could only do one form of art, you know, like mixed media or making journals or playing with clay or playing with alcohol ink or paper, what, or material, what is your favorite thing? See, Lisa, Lisa's got so much stuff, she doesn't know what to do with it. Do you recycle? Are you a, a hoarder like I am of recycled stuff? Paper crafting, okay. So if you like paper paper crafting, then you can eliminate all kinds of paints, all kinds of pencils, and maybe concentrate on paper, good paper, um, good glue, a good pair of scissors. And if you have trouble with your vision, then things that are textile, you know, like different kinds of papers, like mulberry papers, they just, they feel good just to the touch. You know, um, looking for, you know, rice paper and onion paper and papers that feel good. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie owns every doily that... That's been sold on a live sale. <laughs> mm. 
Oh no. <laughs> I've created a monster in Gina and now she likes paint. <laughs> Yeah, I would do that, the texture. That's, um, you know, I um, I haven't done it in about six months, but I used to go to a, uh, a residence, you know, where individuals, like a rehab place, where um, they're um, recovering from, like, strokes and things like that. And one of the things that the doctor, because I asked him, you know, I don't want to frustrate them in, you know, trying to have them do certain things. Um, I want to, you know, basically, you know, to have a good experience. And I want them getting all frustrated because they can't do things. So he said that anything textile is really good for them because it sort of like regenerates that pathway that's kind of been broken, you know, between the, the brain and, and their functions and stuff like that. And um, and so when they touch things, you know, obviously it's not hard for them to rub their hand over something. But that repetitive uh, feel of all these different uh, textures, he says, is really good. So that's what I was doing for the longest time with them. And the simplest things, like sometimes I would just take a stencil and um, we would just fill, do the stencil with some spackling it, because I go the cheap way. I use spackling instead, <laughs> instead of going to buy texture paste because that's more expensive. But anyway, so and then, you know, it dries super quick and then they could just rub their hand on it. And it was just that simple. And then sometimes we just get a chalk, a colored chalk, and it's easy for them to rub the colored chalk over that. And then. All they have to do is now rub their hand and it rubs it in and the crevices and they're still, they're creating art, but they're feeling more so than what they're, you know, than, than what they're looking at. And that stimulated them more than visually seeing what they were doing. The, the feeling of it uh, went a long way. So um, those are kinds of things you might think about making yourself like a text. I mean, a, a texture book so that when you're not up to doing your art or your vision isn't that clear that particular day, you still enjoy your art. You just feel all your pages and, you know, all of the um, um, different types of um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but um, that would be fun. Make yourself a text, a, a texture book. When everything's going good, make it. And then when things aren't going good, you know exactly what's there because you made it and you can feel it and you can enjoy it and you can see it, you know, um, through your hands because you, you made it. You know exactly what's there. I'm kind of liking that idea myself for myself. And get some fabrics that feel good. Because there's a lot of fun fabrics. And then also if you've got some, um, um, what are those things called? Fibers. And like if, for instance, on one page, if you um, either glued or sewed some fibers across, right? And then brought them down and then sewed them on the bottom, left them loose in the middle so that you can come back and you can rub your hands over those fibers. You go, get up, go up and down and get that sensation. You can go across. And fibers feel so cool. I mean, I do that myself. <laughs> they just feel good. And they're comforting. And if you got a fabric like chenille fabric, and on another page, you know, glued down some chenille fabric. And then and just sit there and feel it. Even when you're watching TV or doing something else, just, you know, and it makes you feel good. It's very comforting. I think we all should make one. How about it, people? We should all make us one. <laughs> just don't put, uh, unless you're into that, I would say, just don't put 
sandpaper or something. But you know that really, really fine grit, like, you know, like, I don't know what number it is, but I mean that really, really fine one. It actually feels good. I like the way that feels because I was using it the other day on a project and, it, and I found myself just going like that. It feels good. Yeah, I think we should all do that. What else could you put in there? Different kinds of laces, you know, like, um, or doilies, you know, things that have been hand crocheted. That, those, I mean, all these ladies, these are the kinds of things they buy. And why? They don't do a darn thing with them. They look at them and they touch them. Some of the ladies even smell them. <laughs> They go, oh, it smells so good. They get a book and they stick their nose in the book or they get a piece of paper. They like to sniff the paper. <laughs> We're all crazy. <laughs> We're just all crazy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, exactly. There you go, Sherry. That would be a great channel. No, Gina, we're all crazy. It's just only a few of us are willing to admit it. Like, for instance, in my group, we do what's called a flowish journal, which is a supply journal that is just wrapped around so you can pull the things out. But a couple of, I guess it was a month ago or two months ago, we did one, and it was all textures. And so either the, the picture in there had to represent a texture or literally the thing you put in had to have texture. And it was a really fun um, journal that we did. And the ladies really liked it. And um, um, I'm going to need to do that one again. Well, we didn't do it that long ago, but it was it was fun. And even if you get like the textured wallpaper, you know, that that has embossing on it and put a couple of those pieces in the book and, you know, you could touch those too. That's cool. And um, if you um, when you're feeling good, if you got. That's what we'll do next week. This is a fun, a fun project. You get a picture from a magazine and you highlight the main features with a glue gun. So, you know, so you have that little bump and then um, you paint it all with black and then you come back with a highlight and the, and the pictures always come out looking so cool. It looks like, you know, you've painted it or done some kind of art because everything gets painted over and you just have highlights. But if you did those in, in on small pages, like maybe flowers or rose, you know, some kind of a, your favorite flowers, and you did that, and then you would just touch those and those would go really cool. And for some reason, the hot glue, after it's cold, it's cold, cold. And it, it has a really cool sensation because it's cool and soft and rounded. That would be fun. Yeah, Sherry, you should do that. That would be a fun idea. When you do the highlighting, um, if you have, uh oh, there, I'm going to tell her something and she's probably going to say she has to buy it. Uh oh. Well, what I use, one of two things, I'll get it for you right now and I'll show you. I use either, just let me find one here. She's tricking me into telling her what to buy. She's pretty slick. Either this or... I usually highlight it with some kind of a metallic. Now, 
uh, Deco Art, well, almost all of the cheapy brands, Folk Art, Deco Art, they all have their version of metallic paints. And these you can get for like $2. And they come in all different colors. You only need one color for now. And, um, you know, or uh, Deco Art also has these. They're uh, called... Uh, they're wax. They're called waxes, but I don't know why they're called waxes, but they're also metallic. And, um, and I would not uh, recommend these no matter what brand you get. They tend to dry out. I mean, you can rehydrate them by putting a little bit of water or glycerin or keeping something damp in it at all times. But that's usually what I do. Mine are still pretty moist because I'll put something um, like a little piece of napkin or something wet and sit it in there so it can rehydrate. But anyway, so once you, you know, once you um, highlight the, the picture or the painting with the hot glue gun and you paint it all um, black and, or any color you want, but I just did it in black but you want it all one color. And then you come back with some kind of a metallic with your finger and go and go along all the, the um, hot glue gun to highlight everything. And it's just a really cool look. So not only does it feel good, it looks good. But you only need one color. <laughs> Hey Sherry, that's what you should do. You figure out, you figure out what the thing is that's going to be tested, and then you get like two or three guest people on there with you, and we all experiment at the same time and see if we end up with the same results. Because you know, when two people do the exact same thing, it rarely comes out the same. I wonder, like an experiment would be the same thing, come out totally different. <laughs> There you go. We've got a plan already. Very, very good. All right. Uh oh. Five minutes. So do we. So is that right? Is um, Selena coming on in five minutes? I know. I'm gonna go eat something. Gotta go throw a. A um, a dog bone to the to to my to my dogs and my husband. <laughs> All right. So what did we learn today? We learned how to enlarge the spine of a journal if we wanted to, and we learned how to make the spine smaller, and we learned how to make a pocket with a gusset. To put in our journal and we learned which is up a oh, word where, where does that little journal go I don't even know where it ended up can't even show off the little journal we make because I don't know where it is now underneath all this stuff uh oh oh well <laughs> I really don't know oh here it is uh -huh. And we learned how to minimize the spine to create a little smaller book. We did that in a little gusset thingamajigger. We learned the right direction to use our crocodile. See if I remember next time how to do it properly. And we learned how to fix a mess 
and make it even nicer than we originally wanted it in the first place. So there. Lots done. Lots of fun. Thank you for keeping me company. And um, have your glue guns ready for next time. I think that should be the plan. Glue guns, only one color of metallic, and a basic, um, a basic uh, color like black or something dark though. It works better with a dark color so that the metallic stands out sort of like these do, right? Black with the metallic. So yeah, we'll do that. Oh no, Jaina. <laughs> Don't forget the glue sticks. <laughs> Not not any good having a gun without the sticks, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, then. I'm not sure when I'll come on, ladies, because you know me. I'm kind of impromptu. So go ahead and um, uh, subscribe to the channel so you'll know when we do it. But maybe next Saturday or maybe before. Well, I do come on whenever I feel like it, and I'm a night owl, so... If any of you are night owls, you'll find me popping up sometime during the week next week when you least expect it. Um, other than that, um, we'll probably see you at somebody's sale. I'm not buying nothing, but um, I might be lurking, listening to see who you guys are talking about. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. And we will see you somewhere sometime. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I am the insomniac. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks again. Bye.